There's antimony, arsenic, aluminum, selenium, and hydrogen, and oxygen, and nitrogen, and rhenium, and nickel, neodymium, neptunium, germanium, and iron, americium, ruthenium, uranium, europium, zirconium, platinum, vanadium, and lanthanum, and osmium, and astatine, and radium, and gold, protactinium, and indium, and gallium. <laughs> I hope you're all paying attention. There's going to be a short quiz later on. Hello, boys and girls, and welcome to the Cary Squared Chemistry Show. I'm Cary, and I'm Cary. Today, we'd like to talk to you about safety in the chemistry laboratory environment. Remember, you cannot properly conduct a chemistry lab without the proper safety precautions. Let's begin. Proper clothing is a must while in the chemistry laboratory. There are certain clothes that must be avoided when performing a lab. Long hair should be pulled back into a ponytail so that it is not able to catch fire or fall into chemical substances. All gum needs to be thrown out before the entering the lab so that no harmful chemicals are ingested. Silk and synthetic materials should not be worn, as they are very flammable. Long and dangly jewelry should be avoided because it can fall into chemicals or flames. Large bulky sleeves are a hazard as they can get in the way and also meet chemicals or catch on fire. Finally, short skirts, shorts, and open-toed shoes should not be worn as chemicals could possibly drip on the skin, causing severe burns. Exposed skin is also susceptible to any pieces of glass possibly broken during the lab. Safety eyewear must be worn at all times in the laboratory due to government regulations. It also must be worn in order to protect your eyesight from chemical substances, even if you're not the one doing the lab. That is what happens when you're not wearing the proper eye gear. Let's retake that situation with the peer that is wearing the proper eye gear. fire, a beaker should be placed over the flames to deprive the fire of oxygen. The beaker should be left on for several minutes to make sure that the flames are indeed out. In case of a large fire, Carbon dioxide fire extinguishers should be used to put out the flame. Unless magnesium or another certain reactive material is involved. If hair or clothing is ignited, the emergency shower or fire blanket should be used. If acid should spill on your skin, the teacher should be informed immediately. You should use the emergency shower or go to a trained nurse or physician immediately. Be sure to mop the water after the body wash to make sure that no one slips. In the case of a severe cut or burn, you should go immediately to the nurse's office. Ah! Ow! My arm! I spilled a chemical on it! Ah! What am I going to do? Now we're going to film what you should do in an emergency situation. Ow! I spilled a chemical on my arm. Better wash it off. Now I'm going to go to the nurse. You caught me. I like to break a mental sweat too by reading my chemistry textbook. But always remember that experiments involving toxic gases should be performed under a fume hood. This particular chemical gives off a strange, very strange odor and it's potent. If you need to smell this strange odor, gently walk it towards your nose. If not, keep it away from yourself and your neighbors, and gently place it in the fume hood, like such. You should never deviate from the published procedure because an incorrect process of combining materials could lead to a hazardous substance or material. The 
most common injuries in labs are simple cuts and burns that can be avoided by preparing and using materials properly and by using common sense about hot items. Apparatus should be securely clamped to a metal ring in order to avoid tipping when containing hot or potentially dangerous chemical substances. Apparatus must be securely clamped. Well, that obviously wasn't tight enough. Do not eat, drink, or smoke in the chemistry laboratory. You could accidentally ingest some dangerous chemical substance. Like Carrie did. <coughs> well, that's all we have today. Thanks for tuning in to the Carrie Squared Chemistry Show. We hope you learned a lot and never endangered yourself or your peers in the chemistry lab. To be thrown out, thrown out before the. To be thrown out, thrown out before the. To be thrown out, thrown out before the. Any chemical spills. <laughs> no, In case of a large fire, <laughs> unless magnesium or another certain reacting material is involved. But we're not going to tell you what those are, so you're going to be screwed. <laughs> <laughs> if clothing or hair is ignited, the emergency. Emerging. The teacher should be a fucking ah. Oh. Apparatus should be securely apparatus should be securely clamped to a metal ring in order to. Oh avoid. damn it! <laughs> you <laughs> broke. <laughs> uh. Mr. Ass, Carrie just broke a jacket. Carrie broke a jacket. <laughs> Not. Out now, brown cow. Out now, brown cow. Out now, brown cow. Out now, brown cow. Antimoniosidic aluminum, selenium, and hydrogen, and oxygen, and nitrogen, and rhenium, and nickel, neodymium, neptunium, germanium, and iron, americium, ruthenium, uranium, europium, zirconium, lutetium, vanadium, and lanthanum, and osmium, and astatine, and radium, and gold, and protectinium, and indium, and gallium, and iodine, and thorium, and thulium, and thallium. There's your tree of ytterbium, actinium, rubidium, and boron, gadolinium, niobium, iridium, and strontium, and silicon, and silver, and samarium, and bismuth, and lithium, beryllium, and barium. Go. Isn't that interesting? I hope you're all paying attention, there's going to be a short quiz <laughs> later on.